What's up everyone, this is FP Sticks, and in today's video I'm going to bring you uh, yesterday's sets, some battles from yesterday's sets. I was actually able to achieve ace ranking, which is technically rank 21 in Go Battle League here. Um, still using my favorite team here, the Toxic Croak team. If you have not already checked out my in-depth video on this team, make sure to check that out. A lot of good information there. Um, today was kind of a tough day of Go Battle League. I definitely made some mistakes, um, and this is you know this is something i find uh after i release like the main video of the team that i've been using is the next day it's a little bit more challenging for me because uh more people that i pair up against are going to know my team and uh, kind of have a strategy of how to play around it but that is the life of a content creator can't sit here and complain if people know your team because that is kind of what i signed up for here so um if you i've been getting a lot of comments from people saying that they were able to use my team and have a lot of success with it and that is awesome i really enjoy using this team and i'm probably going to continue using this team until ultra league rolls around it's right around the corner and um, as you will see in this video my starting uh mmr rating so my, my starting mmr um was like 23 2392 or 2393 one of those things we'll see it in the video after this first set um, if you see that little like white box uh, on top of my rating and my opponent's rating that's some glitch that uh, keeps occurring I'm not sure why it is happening but it's really annoying um, so that was my starting uh, rating once I hit uh, rank 20 and then the very next set uh, I was able to hit rank 21 uh, and I ended the day slightly above 2400 rating. Um, however, I didn't include that that last set in this video just for the sake of time, but uh, kind of a tough day of Go Battle League. Again, I did make some mistakes, ran into some tough team comps, but let's kind of see um, some of these battles play out here. There was some pretty hype uh, moments in this uh, in these sets for sure. <clears throat> My Sableye is barely able to survive that Ice Beam against the Azumarill, and this uh, return is going to do a lot of damage here. Now, I need to get some farm on this Skarm in here. Oh, nice rhyme. And so I'm gonna farm it down with a zoom roll. Of course, there's a Stun Fisk in the back. There's always a Stun Fisk in the back. And these Deoxys leads are really, really tough. I ran into like 10 or 11 Deoxys leads today and they were all pack and Psycho Boost. So it's been really tough for my Toxicroak. My Toxicroak is a little bit upset with me having to deal with all of these Psycho Boost Deoxys in the league because you just can't win that. Even if you bait twice, there's no scenario in which a Toxicroak can take out a Psycho Boost Deoxys. Um, so my opponent leads Alolan Marowak and then they come in with Shift Tree. This is a pretty telltale sign that this could be the uh, Caleb Pang Alola Marowak double grass in the back. So luckily Toxicroak and Skarmory are both gonna have play against the Ferrothorn, which is the thing that's most likely in the back. The shift tree can't fully commit to farming me down, but I wanted to threaten the return. So I just kept farming there instead of throwing the foul play that would have allowed him to snarl me all the way down. At this point, I bring in Toxicroak to absorb some of this energy, and then I'm gonna switch into Skarmory and start farming down. The only way I can really threaten this Alolan Marowak here is if I have an energy advantage with Skarmory. Energy on Toxicroak really isn't that uh, efficient at taking out Alolan Marowak, but preserving a little bit of health on my Toxicroak is gonna be pretty clutch for um, the most likely uh, Ferrothorn in the back. So we'll see what my opponent wants to do. I have a lot of energy loaded on my Skarmory here. They bring in the Shiftry. They want me to dump some of my energy from the Skarm. I'm gonna throw the Sky Tight. They actually shield, which was very surprising to me. At this point, uh, I know the Shiftry is pretty low on energy, so I'm gonna let my Skarmory go down. My Toxicroak is gonna come in and get a jump start on energy. It is a Ferrothorn. I'm keeping track of their energy. It takes four Bullet Seeds to get to a Power Whip, and I am in Power Whip range, so I'm gonna have to shield this up. At this point, Mud Bomb should be just enough to take out this Ferrothorn. It hits for neutral because of the Steel and Grass typing, and then uh, the Shift Tree in the back, I just need to land this Sludge Bomb. This is massive overkill, but going to take out the Shift Tree and come back from an Alolan Marowak lead. Prime example of my backline really being able to handle that team there. Okay, Skarmory lead is not good. <clears throat> Gonna immediately switch into... Sableye and they, oh man, they hard punish it with a uh, Scrafty. So this is not looking too good. Um, 
If they no shielded the return, I would probably try to fight for swap here. But at this point, I just have to kind of let this go down and take the shield advantage. I'm most likely going to uh, bring in my Toxic Croak here, absorb all this damage, and then probably switch into Skarmory to get a jump start on energy farming. If there's a Stunfisk in the back, nothing I can do. But I kind of had a feeling that this was going to be a double fighter strat, and that saving two shields for Skarmory was going to help me win this game. So this Scrafty is completely unloaded on energy. I have a Sludge Bomb stored. I blind swap into Skarmory. They're staying in with their own Skarmory. So uh, the fact that they're staying in means that they don't have a hard punish to this Skarmory in the back, which is why I'm continuously farming here. So that way, if they do switch, uh, I have some residual energy to threaten in whatever comes in. I'm pretty much at 100 energy here. Gonna throw now. They, are, they did not shield that, and they are continuing to stay in. I'm going to shield this move, and it was the Brave Bird. So that's a big shield there. I can still overfarm a little bit more. Going to throw the Sky Attack. Let's see if they want to commit their last shield here. They let it go, and it was another fighter in the back. So it was a Skarmory double fighter strat. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, because I burned the last shield with Sky Attack, I'm able to go for the combo play here with Toxicroak and Sludge Bomb. Barely doesn't take out the Primeape, and I'm able to counter it down. Good game. All right, Altaria lead is tough, but since, uh, you know, my previous video, I have always been immediately switching into Sableye. And when they stay... Oh, man, I think this is the match that had me almost throw my phone, because my opponent... Oh... My opponent completely randomly swapped and guessed correctly and caught a foul play on Azumarill. I was uh, I was blown away when that happened. Uh, they just they guessed correctly, so nice nice call on their part. I am in a terrible spot here. I've seen Altaria, I've seen Azumarill. I'm guessing there's a Stunfisk in the back. If you don't see Stunfisk in the lead, it's in the back. Everyone runs Stunfisk and Azumarill. Uh, I will shield up this Ice Beam. At this point, I'm just trying to scrounge out a, a somewhat win scenario. I don't know. This is really rough. I'm out of shields. Out comes the Altaria. I was going to try to catch a Sky Attack on my Scarm, but they're actually dumping energy here anyway. So at this point, I'm like, maybe there's not a Stunfisk in the back. Or my opponent is just toying with my emotions. I'm continuing to farm here because they're continuing to stay in. It's kind of interesting. They throw the Sky Attack. They're still staying in. So I'm going to throw a Sky Attack here. I'm one Air Slash away from another Sky Attack. They let it go. In the back is their own Toxic Croak. This was a really heads up play by them. Um, yeah, they saved the shield for Toxic Croak. And I don't have enough energy on my own Toxic Croak. This was a CMP tie. And I lost the CMP tie. Oh, man. So close. I was almost able to come back from that. That The catch that my opponent made was huge. Okay, so this is where I hit rank 20. 2393 was my starting um, MMR there. So here's the next set. Okay, Surfetch. My whole team beat Surfetch, but I don't have a response to Mandibuzz. So I'm going to attempt to catch an Aerial Ace on my Skarmory. They let the Sludge Bomb through, but I was too slow to get out of here. I actually let this... Aerial Ace go through. That is a questionable play. I do know that my whole team beats Surfetched, but it might have been nice to preserve that Toxic Croak. I do catch an Aerial Ace here, which is great. That's like eventually what I want to do is catch an Aerial Ace on Skarmory. Because I was able to catch that Aerial Ace, this gives me a green light to fully farm down this Mandibuzz and see what my opponent wants to do. These foul plays are not that threatening. I know Mandibuzz is energy dry at this point. They're not going to get to another move. They switch in their Surf Fetched. Very nice play by them, but I'm one Air Slash away from another Sky Attack, and I'm, I know I'm going to be able to burn both the shields here. Now, I need to start going to Farm City with my Sableye and going to see, see what's at the back here. Man, this hair is always sticking out. Okay. So I'm going to bring in my Sableye. These Leaf Blades are going to hurt. So I'm actually going to commit both my shields. I know the Mandibuzz is out of energy. So if my opponent does try to go for a sack swap on the mana buzz, I can switch into my Toxic Croak and counter it down before they can get to move. There's the sack swap. I knew it was coming and I'm able to counter it down. I now have loaded energy on my Toxic Croak. 
what do they want to do? They bring out the Surfetched. I do not want to get any more counter damage or get hit by move. So down goes the Surfetched. In the back is Noctowl. This is not good at all. This is not good at all. Shadow Claw is double resisted. So at this point, I'm looking at their health and I'm thinking, okay, I can get to a foul play and a return. And I'm hoping that this is going to be just enough. They get an extra wing attack through there, which is very scary. Can I get there? Can I get there? Sliver of health. I get to the return, and as you will see, this is just enough to take out the Noctowl. That was a crazy match and a crazy team. Good game to my opponent. Toxic Croak and Altaria. It's a tough lead. I'm gonna say swap. And out comes Meganium. So I can win switch advantage here because of my energy advantage. Um, Sableye and Meganium reach their charge move at the same time and Sableye does win CMP. So it's just, it's always very important that I don't allow my opponent to sneak in a free Vine Whip. So we're going to see what my opponent wants to do. They do shield. We're even in shields now. At this point, I will commit my last shield and commit to the farm here. This guarantees that my Skarmory is going to get aligned with the Altaria and that's really good for me. I have Energy Sword as well. See what they want to bring it. They bring in the Altaria. I knew Altaria didn't have a move yet, which is why I'm farming a little bit more here and not throwing immediately. And I'm actually going to be able to get to another foul play here. This is amazing. I have to let Sableye go because I want to guarantee that my Skarmory is able to get on the Altaria. So Altaria is loaded. They're staying in. So I'm, what I'm assuming that they're going to do is throw two sky attacks and then leave. They throw the sky attack. I'm expecting them to swap out right now. So I actually blind swap my own Toxic Croak to get a jump start on energy. And it was actually their own Toxic Croak in the back. So by me switching in there, I knew that the Altaria had dumped all of its energy. So, um, Worst case scenario, I counter down the Altaria. Like, it, I was still going to be able to do that. In uh, there, I intentionally let the Toxic Croak farm me so I can farm them. And then um, I'm able to get this Sky Attack onto the Altaria and come back from that tough lead. Their whole team actually loses to Skarmory there, except for Altaria and the two shields. So, kind of interesting. These are the teams that I enjoy seeing. I get acid sprayed here. Oh, but I actually, okay, this game, this game, this game. So I, I get acid sprayed and for some reason I accidentally over tapped and KO'd the victory bell too soon. I did not want to take out that victory bell. I did not want to take out the victory bell that soon. I wanted to wait out the switch clock. So now I'm throwing these brave birds to try to give the Bastidon less farm against my Skarmory. I saw that my switch clock was up, so I'm able to get my Sableye in this matchup. Oh, this match, this match. Who's who's ready to shed a tear? They're staying in with Bastidon, which is uh, interesting. So I'm wondering, do they not have another Razor Leafer in the back? And they also shielded the Bastidon. It took me way too long to realize what they might have in the back. I'm gonna throw another foul play. And they double shield the Bastion. So at this point I'm like, oh man, did I make a huge mistake here? In the back is a Metacham. Okay, I throw the foul play here and then I stupidly think that I can get to another move. So I'm staying, oh no, I switched my Toxic Crook there, but this is too slow. I should have swapped to my Toxic Croak immediately when I saw that Metacham, but that was not what I expected in the back at all. I did not expect a Metacham in the back at all. Um, and so because it took me by surprise and my slow reaction time lost me the game. So that's that's just what happens sometimes. Sometimes you're, the surprise factor causes you to make a mistake and that's what uh, ends up losing the game for you. Ah, oh, these Sableye safe swaps. My team is weak against an opposing Sableye safe swap. So I throw the Mud Bomb. Uh, I want the Sableye to dump some energy here. Uh, that foul play hurts. I'm gonna bring out my Skarmory here. I'm assuming it's the Azumarill double ghost team. So Alola Marowak in the back, we'll see. 
Again, with an Azumarill Lee, you just never know what's in the back. This Sableye is able to get to a last second foul play. This is so bad. This is so bad. So bad. They bring out Azumarill here. So now I'm wondering, maybe it's not Alolan Marowak, because otherwise you would have definitely enjoyed some farm with the Fire Spin from AWAC, but at this point, Double Shield of Sableye is going to have to hopefully sweep the back line. I was still hoping that there was an AWAC in the back. But that should have been my first sign right there, is that they didn't bring out the AWAC to farm down my Skarm. So I'm going to double shield this and load up as much energy as possible with the Sableye and see what they want to do about it. So I'm at 100 energy. Going to throw the return here. They let it go through and now they switch into their um, Ibama Snow. Going to throw this foul play here. And I'm really trying to catch a move on my Toxic Croak. I counted it perfectly, but they actually kept over farming because they knew that I was going to try to do that. So amazing play by my opponent. Can't even be mad about that. And then I did not store a foul play before I switched out. And so I uh, unfortunately lost this game. Uh, but my first big mistake was just not handling that Sableye safe swap uh, good enough. What I need to do, and I'm, I'm telling myself this every single day because I need to remind myself of it. If your opponent safe swaps a Sableye, get your Skarmory in there as quickly as possible. That needs That is my game plan from here on out. We'll see how it works out. Razor Leaf Tropius is, is not great. I'm able to burn the first shield with Sludge Bomb. You've seen this a lot in my previous video. This time I will shield up the Leaf Blade because it is Razor Leaf uh, and the Razor Leafs do so much damage. Out comes Bastiodon. Uh, I have a decent energy advantage here, so we're going to see what my opponent wants to do here. Uh, I once again am trying to time the throwing of my charge moves to not allow them to get in any free energy here. I cannot have... Um, I really don't want my Toxic Croak aligned with the Tropius, so I will shield this to guarantee that I win switch and see what they bring out. Most likely the Tropius. They do bring out the Tropius. I'm not able to get to a move. That's fine. Skarmory is a hard response to this. In the back is Deoxys and this is game over because guess what? Everyone runs freaking Psycho Boost on their Deoxys. So not going to be able to win this, um, but we will see. I hit uh, Ace rating or Ace rank right after this, after I claim my set. So we'll see that. Um... Oh, this Deoxys, man. Yeah, this is... Uh... They actually hit me with Thunderbolt there. Yeah, good game, good game. So there's the ace rank, 2377, because I, I dropped from that 2-3. But thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Uh, we're going to continue grinding. It's going to be a long season for sure. But make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you appreciate the content. And I will see you all in the next video.